Welcome to my Captain Ginyu Season 4 Guide. Captain Ginyu is a character with a wide variety of tools and an incredibly fun playstyle. This guide's focused on helping people pick the character up. This is not a combo guide that's coming uh, next. Uh, this guide is targeted at players who are interested in picking up Captain Ginyu. And by the time you're finished watching this, you should have a general understanding of how he works and what you should be doing in matches. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first aspect we're going to cover is the most important aspect of any character, their normals. Starting with this 5L, it is a 6 frame poke with good range, making it ideal to get your offense started. 5LL also has great range. It serves as a fairly good option against Reflect. And because it's a multi-hitting move, it's great for baiting guard cancels. His 5LLL is not a string I would recommend. It has very low utility. Uh, the middle part of his auto combo does not juggle well, so he's not the kind of character that you should poke with auto combo at, in, at the mid-range. This is not a string that I would recommend. His 2L is also 6 frames, and in the Season 4 update, they made the advantage on block 0 which is actually incredibly good for staggering. This means every time you do this string, you no longer lose your turn. 5M is one of Ginyu's most used buttons. It is his best poke at mid-range due to its high speed and long distance travel. It's his go-to combo starter. It's great at round start, and it's an overall wonderful button. 2M is your main low poke. This will be your go-to low starter. It is quite slow at 14 frames, but it has some nice distance. The fact that it's a bit slow can be beneficial, however, in frame trap situation. Ginyu has a pretty standard 2H. It is, however, a grounded 2H, meaning he does not leave the ground, which gives you the ability to cancel it into special moves on block. And of course, there is his infamous and hilarious 5H. For those that don't know, this move actually is a low attack, so opponents who are blocking high will get hit by this. Also, thanks to a buff from the earlier seasons, it is now possible to hold the button down in order to charge it. The longer you charge it, the more damage it does. You are also able to freely move while charging it. And it doesn't stop there. While you're spinning, you are invincible to level 1 projectiles. And if all that weren't enough, you are now able to cross up crouching opponents. And yes, this even works in the corner. An important note, however, on Ginyu's heavy, due to the slow startup, it will always leave a gap in your string, meaning if the opponent is waiting for it, they can always get a reflect. You can use this to your advantage, however, by simply charging the button if you're sure your opponent is going to reflect. Ginyu's jumping normals are all quite good in their own right. His jump light hits multiple times, which is good for meter build and just generally poking opponents that, are, that may be above you. It also has a very small hurt box, which makes it perfect for tagging super dashes. Ginyu's jump medium is another great button. It has amazing range. It's perfect for crossing up, and it allows you to do a double overhead on block. This works on characters of all hitbox sizes. His jumping medium also has a lot of active frames, which means it stays out for a while, and it also has a very small hurt box, so it makes it a great counter poke for air attacks as well. His jump H is pretty standard, but it definitely gets the job done. Inu is a normal air 2H character, meaning his air 2H sends the opponent up for a normal B and B. Next, it's time to cover Ginyu's only special move, his trusty shoulder. We'll go ahead and start with the Light Shoulder. The Light Shoulder has great range, as well as great block stun. 
on hit, you can get a Vanish Confirm. It also combos into most assists fairly easily. On block, it's not unsafe, but you will lose your turn as you're left fairly close to the opponent. Keep in mind that vanishing after the shoulder has been blocked is not a true block string. The light version is the version of the shoulder you'll be using the most, as its great speed and distance make it a wonderful poke at mid-range and the fact that it layers so well with assists makes it one of your primary pokes. The medium version of the shoulder starts up more slowly than the light version, but it does grant a smash on hit. The medium functions as your go-to combo starter for Ginyu. The heavy version of the shoulder is not only the fastest version, but it also grants a wall bounce on hit. It has the same amount of recovery on block as the other two shoulders, but it has the added bonus of pushing the opponent away. A special property that all three versions share is that they can be cancelled into a summon on block or hit. This is a great option to use if you have an assist available. If your assist is not up, however, it's important to not be too predictable with this as your opponent can easily tag you out of a summon. However, the pushback on the heavy version is designed to help you sneak a summon in from time to time. All three versions are performable in the air as well. The light version still functions as a great poke even in the air. When paired with a fast assist, you can get some pretty tricky setups going. It also pairs well with ranged assists when trying to lock down a jumping opponent. Medium version of the air shoulder is used for certain Ginyu Force combos mid screen. Near the corner, it will be your primary way to get a slide knockdown. And similarly, the air heavy shoulder is used for Ginyu Force combos and getting a slide knockdown mid-screen. Now it's time to talk about the most notable aspect of Ginyu by far, and most likely the reason you're watching this video, is summons. Ginyu has access to roughly 12 summons that are all done with different inputs, and these summons are on a rotation, meaning that the summoned characters will always come out in the same order. That order is Guldo, Rikum, Birder, and Jeez. The summons will always remain in the same order no matter what. Even if Ginyu is tagged out in the middle of the rotation and tagged back in later, the same summon rotation will remain. All summons exist physically on the screen, which means if the opponent attacks them, their animations will be interrupted and they will lose that turn. It's incredibly important, however, to mention that attacking Ginyu will not cause the summons to stop their animation. This makes Ginyu summons incredibly dangerous at neutral and on wake up because the opponent will have to keep in mind what buttons they press at what times, otherwise they will get picked up by assists more often than not. However, this is not to say that the assists are unstoppable. If Ginyu gets hit by an attack that the game considers to be a cinematic, which is usually auto combos or certain special moves, then the summons will immediately despawn. This also applies universally to Dragon Rush. It's also important to note that the game considers Ginyu's summons to be Key Blast, which means the same rules apply, meaning that Ginyu is free to vanish at any point in the animation. Now what these characters do is dependent on the input that you press, and we're going to go through all of these moves one by one with each character, starting with 
Guldo. Guldo's neutral S. He will appear in front of Ginyu and throw a projectile at the opponent. A few things to note is that this is one of your fastest summons, so it's, it's a great way to open up your rotation. It has a very high amount of hit stun, making it fairly easy to convert off of. And best of all, it has a very good amount of tracking. Guldo will do his best to actually throw it at the opponent's position the moment he appears. Neutral Guldo is one of the best summons in Ginyu's kit, and you will most likely use it at neutral. That is to say, when both you and your opponent are mid-screen and you're looking for a hit, this is one of the best attacks to get your offense started. Next up is Guldo's 236 summon. Now this one is dependent on the position of the opponent. This one causes Guldo to appear as close to the opponent as possible and do a psychic attack. Now it's important to note that if you are relatively close to the opponent and there is enough screen space, Guldo will always appear behind them. If you are full screen away from the opponent, Guldo will appear as close to them as possible and do his attack from the front. This attack has a deceptively high hitbox, so it can knock opponents out of their jump. On hit, this attack has absolutely insane hit stun, allowing you to literally run full screen and get a conversion. It's also the only move that will allow Ginyu to combo into body change. While this move does have some neutral applications, the area you will use this most in is on the opponent's wake up. 236 Guldo is one of the, if not the best wake up attack in the entire game as it catches back tech, up tech, and delay tech. If you use this on an opponent's wake up and they do almost anything but block or reflect, they are guaranteed to get hit. As you can see, this is an incredibly powerful move, and honestly, it's one of the biggest perks of learning this character. Guldo's 214 summon is very similar to his 236. It's the same animation with the same properties. However, the main difference is Guldo will always appear close to Ginyu. 214 has even less neutral applications than 236, but it has the same Oki applications as 236 with the added bonus of moving further away from the opponent, which makes it ideal for baiting reversals. Next up is Rikum. Rikum's neutral S summons him to do a lunging physical attack. On hit, this leads to a wall bounce that is fairly easy to convert off of. And on block, it leads to a very high amount of block stun. Due to the strength of Raccoon's other summons, this summon is not used quite as much, but in a situation where you're looking for a little bit of extra block stun, this is not a bad option. Next up is Raccoon's 236S. Uh, Raccoon will appear behind Ginyu and shoot a beam at the opponent. This move is one of the pillars of Ginyu's kit. It has a great amount of block stun. The beam lasts for a long time. The fact that Rikum appears behind Ginyu means that he will often appear off screen, making it difficult for the opponent to tag him. And, and most importantly of all, the hit stun when this move actually connects is absolutely ridiculous. The area you use this summon the most in is pretty much everything. This summon works in block strings, it's amazing from neutral, and it's also incredible on wake up. Raccoon's 214 summon causes him to appear and start charging the Raccoon bomber.
Now, as you can see, this move has an incredibly long startup, making it the most situational of all of your summon. The most useful benefit of this move is that it has armor to key blasts. And while the armor does not extend to Ginyu himself, the attack can still withstand beams. On block, this move grants an insane amount of block stun, as well as a crazy amount of hit stun on hit. The situations where you would use this summon are very limited, mostly if you feel you're being zoned. It's mostly just for key blast protection. There are limited applications as well on the opponent's wake up, but it is important to keep in mind that it will lose to any attack that is not a key blast, even super dash. Next up is Birder. Starting with his S summon, Birder appears and does a series of rapid kicks. Funnily enough, this is your fastest assist. On block, it gives a great deal of block stun. On hit, it gives a very high amount of hit stun, making it incredibly easy to convert off of. And it travels deceptively far, actually hitting full screen. This move will mostly be used in block strings. As your fastest available summon, it is very good to sneak in when you feel like your opponent is waiting for something. Birder's 236 summon is another one of your most important tools in your kit. It will summon Birder to fly back and forth across the screen four times. This move is absolutely amazing at neutral as it cuts off the air for quite a while. Though admittedly on hit, it can be a bit tricky to convert off of. However, it's still one of your absolute best tools. The most recommended area to use this move is at neutral. Due to the fact that it cuts off the sky for so long, it makes it incredibly easy to get your offense started, especially if you layer this with your actual assists. Birder's 214 summon is similar to his 236, except it calls him on the ground. Unlike the air version that hits four times, the grounded version hits two times. This summon deals a very good amount of block stun. It is also quite useful in the corner for stealing the corner. It's also one of the more difficult assists for the opponent to tag with a button. Next up is Jis. Jis's S does a tracking level 1 key blast. This attack will track the opponent anywhere on screen at any height. On block, it yields a decent amount of block stun. On hit, it yields a ground bounce no matter the situation. This particular summon has a lot of recommended areas of use. I would probably say the most recommended would be at neutral. There are a lot of situations where you can punish certain moves that would be difficult to punish otherwise. Keep in mind, however, that the Crusher Ball is a level 1 projectile, so the opponent can reflect and super dash out of the block stun. For Jis, we are going to discuss his 236 and his 214 together. That is because they both do the same summon, just from a different angle. 236 will always summon Purple Comet Crash in front of Ginyu. Whereas 214 will summon Purple Comet Crash behind Ginyu. Now both summons have the exact same properties with the only difference being the direction that Jis and Birder are facing. On block, Purple Comet nets a huge amount of block stun. However, keep in mind that just like Crusher Ball, this is a level 1 Key Blast attack, so the opponent can always super dash out or reflect. 
On hit, Purple Comet gives an incredible amount of hit stun, making it one of the easiest moves in the game to convert off of. And the long charge up actually gives Ginyu plenty of time to pressure the opponent, or even play a little bit risky sometimes. The recommended time to use this assist is at neutral, especially in moments where you need to slow down the match, because this creates a situation where the opponent will mostly have to stop whatever it is they're doing and pay attention to that, so it is great for slowing the match down. Whether or not you use the 214 or the 236 is entirely dependent on the situation. I would recommend using 214 more often than not as it covers uh, a better angle against the opponent. However, if you're trying to zone, I would recommend the 236 as it will usually keep Ginyu safe from most attacks. And lastly, Purple Comet has a very unique property as it's the only summon that can remain on the screen even after Ginyu has been tagged out. It's important to keep in mind that this only applies if Jis and Verder have started their attack. If you tag too early, just like every other assist, they will simply stop their attack and disappear. And with that, we've covered all of Ginyu's grounded summons. And that concludes Ginyu's entire summon rotation when called from the ground. Ginyu can call all of his summons in the air as well. With Birder, however, he will always summon based on Ginyu's current height. The same rule applies to Jesus Purple Comet. So be sure to keep that in mind when summoning either Birder or Jeeks. Next up, we're going to cover Ginyu's supers, starting with his level 1. While it may look pretty standard at face value, it's actually an incredibly unique super in the fact that it is chargeable. That was the level 1 version, but there is also a level 2. And a level 3. Each level increases the damage, and once you get up to the level 3, it actually does grant a hard knockdown. What's great about this super is it brings a lot of utility to Ginyu as a character. Having Ginyu on your team and having this super as his DHC means that you can always crank out more damage by either starting the super with him or tagging him in. Next up is the Ginyu Force level 3. This one functions as a reversal and combo ender. This level 3 has a ton of benefits. Not only is it fully invincible, it travels full screen, and it travels full screen incredibly fast. Not only is this an amazing reversal, but it's an incredible combo ender. It gives you some amazing Ginyu Force setups. You can always get at least one summon out safely without a chance of the opponent doing a reversal on you. And even better, every S summon, except for Raccoon, will hit the opponent meaty if done directly after the level 3 in the corner. Meaty meaning it will hit the opponent at the exact moment they're getting off the ground, meaning they cannot hit you with a button, jump, or even vanish. <laughs> Outside the corner, Jis will still always hit Meaty as well. And of course, there's the infamous body change. So there's a lot of factors to note about body change. The first being, it has an incredibly slow startup. Clocking in at roughly 70 frames full screen, it's not the kind of super that you just throw out or use as a reversal due to the fact that it's simply too slow. That's not to say it's impossible to hit someone. The startup of it is completely invincible. If your opponent ever throws a raw level three at you, it is possible to steal their body if you can react in time.
Now it's important to note that there are two different types of body chain. There is the level three version where Ginyu simply goes for the body steal. And then there is the level four version where Ginyu will injure himself before going for the body steal. Now, the self-inflicted injury on Ginyu cannot kill him, but it can put him on a pixel of life. Now, once body change actually connects, you literally swap characters with your opponent. Whatever assist your opponent has equipped, that's now your assist. Whatever health your opponent had, that is now your health. And the opponent is left with however much health you had on your Ginyu. As for the body changed Ginyu, he is a completely nerfed and semi useless character. None of his S attacks will do anything. You cannot use his level 3, and you cannot body change back. The only moves he has access to is his shoulder and the charge level 3. When it comes to comboing into a body change, as mentioned before, you can only combo into it if Buldo connects his 236S. Next up, we're going to cover Ginyu's assists, starting with his A assist. His A assist is basically his 236L. In my opinion, this is Ginyu's most reliable assist. It has amazing startup at 25 frames. It is also plus 33 on block, making it great for block strings. And best of all, it hits from nearly full screen. And then there's Ginyu B. <laughs> Ginyu B is essentially all 12 of Ginyu summons wrapped into one. That sounds like it would be extremely strong, but it's incredibly hard to use in an actual match. It is not only one, but two rotations that you would have to keep in mind while fighting with your lead character. And the two rotations come from the fact that it follows Ginyu's natural character rotation of Buldo, Raccoon, Birder, Jeese. But on top of that, there's also an input rotation consisting of Neutral S, 236S, 214S, and back to Neutral S. That's not to say that the assist is terrible or unusable, however, as you can get away with simply calling the assist at Neutral and seeing what happens and it does introduce a lot of chaos into the match, as well as the fact that this assist was buffed in Season 4, it now grants you meter every single time you call it. As for Ginyu's C assist, there isn't a whole lot to say. It's pretty standard as far as C assists go. Uh, he lunges forward with his 5M and then ends with the auto combo ender. On the plus side, it has a relatively quick startup of 35 frames, and then it also has a whopping plus 55 on block. But with the increased cooldown on C assist calls, can't exactly recommend this one. When it comes to selecting assists for Ginyu himself to use, I would recommend using neutral based or beam style assists. The reason these assists are good is because they give Ginyu the opportunity to get his summon rotation started. Ginyu is unique in the fact that he has his own assists built in, and as long as he has an assist that can help him get those assists on the screen, he's very much self-sustaining. Due to the nature of Ginyu's tools, he's not overly picky about what position to place him in. In my opinion, he's at his strongest on point just due to the fact of his snowball nature. However, he does work very well mid. He's very good at making up for a lost character due to his incredibly high meter gain and insanely high damage and built-in assists. He does function very well as an anchor. So the position you play him in is entirely up to you. But personally, I would recommend putting him on point with two strong neutral base assists behind him. And with that, we've covered the basics of learning Captain Ginyu. All in all, he may seem like an intimidating character to learn, but in my opinion, he's easily one of the most fun characters in the game to play and just as much fun 
to learn. This guy's already getting pretty long and I didn't want to push it too far so the combo aspect will be in the next part so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, I hope this guide was helpful. If it was, please feel free to leave a like. If you have some questions, go ahead and leave a comment. You can also stop by my stream anytime. I stream most nights around uh, 7 p.m. Central. I appreciate you checking out the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.